I find one so warm. Wait a minute. It's in standby. Hello, Bitter here. I am going to be going to Fosh, the phone shell, uh, on my Linux phone, on my Pi phone and uh, walk everybody through what the apps look like on there. I'm currently using Danknix, so it's going to be a mostly, probably a mostly vanilla experience compared to Manjaro. What I found over time is the, the Manjaro is definitely where the primary development is being done on the Pine phone. If you want to get the newest drivers and get a feel for things working the most correctly, I definitely recommend Manjaro. And I recommend Plasma over Fosh. Fosh is usable for a very small use case of people. Um, what I found is uh, primarily the keyboard doesn't work for international. And that's the biggest one, so I type in Japanese a lot and there's no type head completion. There is no way to substitute hiragana letters for kanji. And that really prevents, that's gonna prevent a lot of people from using it. The keyboard itself is not so bad, but only Plasma really has a working ecosystem, in my opinion. I'm sure that'll improve. I'm sure Librem, Librem might have a better working system, and I just haven't tried it yet. But uh, on Dank to Nix, it's barely usable, in my opinion. Um, it, since my last video, it's been a few weeks. The drivers have improved. It has much better. The Pinecone Pro has much better performance. It's not perfect. But it's definitely see things going in a good direction. All right, let's get going. Here's my pine phone. I have it set to English. And we have the app store open right now. These are the primary set of apps on Posh that are included. I also installed Epiphany just because this is a blank area right here if you don't have it. Open. This is the phone app. You can dial phone numbers. It has contacts and history, very similar to what you'd see on, on iOS and Android. Here's the messaging app. It's also very simple, um, similar to iOS design. You can send text to people, MMS, etc. For privacy reasons, you're not going to see me going too far into the phone or messages app. Next is Epiphany. I'm not going to be demoing Firefox because it was basically bugging out, um, so we'll start with this. Overall, it has a very nice look and feel. It can be a little bit slow to load pages compared to Chrome or Firefox. And the most interesting part of it, though, is the ability to add icons to your desktop using the install site as web application. I'll be hitting that more later. This is the local address book. I haven't really used it yet, and I'm hoping it has some nice integration with the other applications. And here's the time app. You can add multiple time zones to be able to see them. You can add an alarm as well. And you can add timers. This is basically a copy of the clock iOS app. This is the calculator app. It's also very similar to the iOS app. You can put numbers, do some basic calculations, and I'm sure it has some deeper settings. For some weird reason, the keyboard is open. And here's the Maps app. It does a very shallow impression of Google Maps and Apple Maps. It does fine searching for locations. The biggest problem is if you want to use this for directions, particularly audio directions, it's not really going to do it. Apparently there's a lot of active development on OpenStreetMap to help make those features come true. And here you're seeing some of the first app screen layout issues. If you turn the phone into landscape mode, you should be able to be able to see most of the app. This is the music app that comes with Fosh. I haven't really used it yet. I'm sure I'll have more thoughts on it in the future. This is Megapixel, the default camera app. It's just gonna crash because the drivers aren't really there yet. Open Megapixels from the terminal and you will get an error about a missing INI file. Portfolio is your file manager. Looks like your home directory by default, which is fairly nice. Discover is the package manager. 
you'll find that uh, Dinktix has many less packages as compared to Manjaro. On any of these distros, you'll often find that the update functionality here does not show the same results as calling the updater from the terminal. It works, it looks nice, and it gives a nice UI for installing applications. I like the discoverability it gives. Here is the audio recording app for if you want to make any memos to yourself. It's pretty simple. And the audio quality is mostly okay. Do I need some volume? All right, let's play this. Testing, testing. Yeah, not a horrible speaker. Not great, but not horrible. This is GNOME Tweak Tool, but with a mobile setup. If you've used it before, there should be nothing really surprising here. Here is your generic process monitor to figure out what's using your CPU. I believe GNOME has this application out of box as well. Here's the weather app. It works well enough. Because the weather is coming from Norway, I've noticed it doesn't have as many US cities as some of the other options to have, but yeah, good enough. Let's go to settings. There's a lot of settings in here. One of the big surprises I found with Posh, and maybe it's better with Plasma, uh, there is no internet sharing. That is actually a requirement for me when commuting to work when I go on the train. Otherwise, I can't work for about a half hour while I'm just sitting there. Wi-Fi, VPN settings and network. This is no SIM card right now. Bluetooth. Background, which doesn't seem to work all that well. It only seems to appear temporarily while switching. Notifications for different apps individually. Edits global search. Multitasking, which doesn't seem to do anything unless you're using convergence when plugged into a computer monitor. This is applications, I believe it's settings for different applications. My accounts, lots of default stuff to get yourself set up. I am likely gonna use Google for storing my calendar and contacts because I haven't found anything better. Tuta, no, that is not really a great choice. Sound. Um, input. Ooh. Power. Got your battery. It says I have about four hours, which is actually more than I expected. Displays. This is the resolution. You need to turn down the scale to access some applications which aren't don't have a layout that's compatible with this screen size. Keyboards. These are the keyboards I currently have configured. None of the Japanese ones really work. And uh, with the Japanese Kana one sort of almost works, but not really usable for day-to-day -day life. No printers. The removable media. This is more or less the GNOME settings panel from what I've seen. Very similar in layout. Date time, 24 hour, and then about. That was the rough show. You can also see a full list of apps, even the ones that aren't really mobile, mobile friendly. What you'll find is a lot of these apps are, there are a number of native apps that are used on GNOME, which have a new layout added to be mobile compatible. There are also a number of apps that were replaced, like say Megapixels, which you see right here. The reason why it's, the reason, I pointed the wrong one. The reason why it's replaced is because as a one, it might not have mobile friendly layout. 
or two, it's not ARM compatible. Um, I believe uh, Cheese, which is the GNOME app, which a lot of people would recognize, isn't on here because it's not ARM 64 compatible. Um, those are gonna be the, the primary differences for apps. I would say this is not currently usable for what I do as a daily driver. The big ones being non-working keyboard for Japanese input, and two, not being able to do internet connection sharing. And three, the apps just sometimes act really glitchy and buggy, and sometimes updates just totally break apps. I've seen it happen with Firefox a few times. I'm gonna be trying the Plasma game next, and I will be giving an update on how that works, and hopefully the it's gonna be a little bit less buggy than what I have here. Um, but, uh, but, but if you want to try to get a phone working as quickly as possible, my recommendation is go in that direction. In my next video, I'm going to detail some of the apps over there. A few of the apps may or may not be shared. Um, and the Plasma experience, in my opinion, is a little bit closer to what you would expect from Android. Um, it's much more functional. Alright, that's all I have to say this time. I don't have a lot of time for editing. I'm out.